BYU and Northwestern, but uh, Air Force Academy kind of swayed me, you know, to fly and the military career and things like that. And so far, Grandma has had a lot to cheer about. For Air Force Football 86, I'm Lee Douglas. I think Grandma was cheering yesterday. He had a good game. He had a great game and uh, intercepted a pass or two and he hit his hands. But he plays, uh, you know, very, very intently and uh, what a great athlete he is. But what a great uh, young man and what a great leader for our nation he's going to become because he believes and does everything, you know, 100%. All right, Coach, we're going to come back and take a look at next week's opponent, the CSU Rams. We'll have that right after this. Game over in uh, Hawaii. I knew that was going to be a good one in Hawaii. You know, I had the home field advantage and beat them by 10, but uh, I'm sure it was an outstanding offensive game. We'll talk more about CSU in a moment. Uh, they uh, battled for a while against Northern Colorado, and then they pulled away. Not a surprise at all in Boise. See, Bartello had a good day, didn't he? Four touchdowns. UCLA, a very good football team. Oh, no question about it. And, of course, that's a big win for them to come back off the Oklahoma loss like they had, but I really thought probably San Diego would have played a little better. See, BYU ran back the opening kickoff for a touchdown. That was about it. They must have made Washington <laughs> awful mad by doing that. But uh, I think that's the worst loss B BYU's had in a long time. To use a great cliche, things don't get any easier. CSU's a good football team. Steve Bartello, a local boy, is really producing for him. Oh, I'll tell you one thing. Steve Bartello, to be honest with you, John, is as uh, fine a competitor as I've ever played against. And, uh, you know, at the beginning of the year, the two teams that I said that I felt like that had uh, the, straightest, uh, the greatest opportunity to compete for the conference championship was CSU and Utah because of the number of returning veteran players that they have and outstanding players that they have. And, of course, you know, they, that's our next two opponents, CSU and Utah. Utah. This is a team, though, that doesn't quit. You guys will be ready. Well, you doggone right we'll be ready. It's an in-state rival, and, uh, you know, uh, we, we really always look forward to playing them, and it's always an exciting football game. They've got Dale Carr back, and what a great game he had in the opening game against Colorado. Let's hope for another great crowd, maybe even a sellout. Hey, I hope so. All right, Coach, thanks again for joining us. We're out of time. We're going to be back with all the highlights from the CSU Air Force game. We'll have that in our show again next Monday night. So long, everybody. Air Force Football 1986 with head coach Fisher DeBerry. Sponsored by the first. TV 13, the leader in sports television, presents Air Force Football 1986 with head coach Fisher DeBerry. Sponsored by the First National Bank, McDonald's, USAA Insurance, and True Value Hardware. Now your host, John Eves. And good evening, everybody. Welcome to our show. The score is Saturday afternoon at Falcon Stadium, Air Force 24, Colorado State University 7. Coach, what a difference a week makes, and you really had it going offensively and defensively, as you said, on all 11 cylinders. Well, John, it was a complete team victory, no question about that. Boy, our defense just did an outstanding job on a great offensive football team. Our offense took the ball and dominated the, 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 the game. I thought uh, we ran uh, uh, 24 more plays than they did. We had the ball 15 minutes longer than they did. Of course, that's probably the best defense against a, a great offense like CSU. And, of course, our kicking game, I thought, was outstanding. Coach, you made some changes during the week, especially at quarterback. Well, Jimmy Tamalo, boy, what can you, great job. I mean, uh, Jimmy came in and played exactly like we knew he was capable of playing. Jimmy, you know, played in an outstanding high school football program. He'd been in some big games before. And certainly, you know, he's very typical of uh, all the young men we have at the academy. He was just waiting around, chomping at the bits for, to get his opportunity. And we were so proud and just thought he did an outstanding job and played, John, with a lot of poise. All right, Coach, we've got all kinds of highlights. We're going to come back and take a look at Saturday's big victory. We'll have that right after this. Come up and stuff like that. That first drive, though, really set the tone of the ball game, I thought. Oh, John, and no question about that. What a beautiful drive we had, and we kept that ball, you know, about six and a half minutes there to open the, uh, open the first half, and... Uh, uh, you know, I, I thought it gave our young men an awful lot of confidence with that drive. 15-yard 15, 15 play drive. 
We're going to see it, Coach. Uh, what about the crowd Saturday? Well, you know, I, we had 42,000. To be honest with you, John, I was a little disappointed in the crowd. We had 48,000 the week before, and gosh, you know, when you stump your toe and lose a game, that's really when your kids need you a lot more. And I, you know, being an interstate rival like this, I thought we would have had a little better, better crowd than we did. All right, here we go. They kick off, and Anthony Roberson from right here in the Springs, a good return. Oh, boy, great return. We averaged 24 yards of punt return, uh, kickoff return, and, uh, you know, John, we, we're doing a good job, and that young man's going to break one before the year is over. So we, we start off with, uh, we changed a few little schemes for this ball game, and I think it really helped us. And, John, I can't say enough about the tremendous game plan that our offensive coaches and our defensive coaches, kicking team coaches, uh, you know, devised for the game, and particularly developing confidence in our young men as the week went along with the changes that we made, you know, and uh, the fact that we struggled a little bit last week. Johnny Smith right here, a great pass by Jimmy Tamello. Well, we changed the style of passing a little bit and, uh, you know, went to our halfbacks a little more in this game, showed them some passes they hadn't seen before. And this is Johnny taking it in on the counter dive play. And again, what a beautiful drive. And uh, I really thought that gave an offensive team a lot of confidence in what they needed just at that particular time. Well, you've taken up six and a half minutes on the clock and you're off to a quick 7-0 start. Uh, uh, fine start. This is a, a quick slant out there. We, we missed tackle, but great hustle there on the part of EJ. And boy, Steve Sigler, I mean, isn't it great to see him back in there? They miss a field goal right here, Coach, so it's still 7 to nothing. Well, DeLine, no question, is one of the better field goal kickers in the country. And that was a long one for him, but yet at the same time, that shows you the confidence that they have. Pat Evans, I thought, ran very, very hard. Pat had a great day and just played with great intensity, and the offensive line had a good surge there. We had to turn the ball back to him, though, but great pressure here by by uh, uh, Spiewak and by Hank on the right there and Chad Henning's coming in. And we had six sacks in the, in the ball game, John. That's the end of the first quarter, Coach, and you're up uh, seven to nothing. Then we're going to get to Mark Simon. I don't think you could write or draw a punt to do any um, better than this one. Isn't that beautiful? And, uh, boy, we out kicked them seven yards per kick. But look where that ball <laughs> goes out in the half a yard line right there. And think about how many times he's done that. Great hit by Terry Mackey, E.J. Jones right here. And again, our defense just didn't give Bartello, one of the best in the nation, you know, uh, very much running. As a matter of fact, he's six yards is the longest play he had, John. You get another good drive going here, Coach. Look at this uh, second effort right there. Isn't that great? Uh, Pat, Pat Evans, I tell you, he's as intense a football player, as fine a practice player as I've ever worked. We had a good drive right there. And, of course, Jimmy with a lot of poise, great protection by our offensive line. Hit Al Albert Booker with a misdirection pass, and of course that was Albert's first catch, and couldn't come at a better time. All right, Chris Blazy did well kicking off. You're up 14 nothing now. Well, you know, I told him at the first part of the week, John, that uh, you know we had to play like a thoroughbred and a racehorse. That going, we had to come out, establish position early, and uh, you know, and, and gain ground every quarter, and that's exactly what we did in the ball game. Your defense just, uh, here they are getting a game, but your defense really put pressure on Stouffer, and he's a fine quarterback. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing. I think he is a, as fine a quarterback as there is in our league, and uh, you know, that was a well-executed play on his part. Again, look at Pat's determination Jeez. right here. And that free safety, boy, I tell you, he came up, and uh, he's a fine football player, I'm telling you. But Pat, uh, you know, really wanted a little more to there. Now, we had a little miscue here, and John, we put the ball down on the ground four times in the game. We didn't lose a ball with a turnover. Matter of fact, we only had one on a pass interception. But now this shows you the poor Stouffer has and great effort by Tommy Rotello and in saving a touchdown to Ty Terrell right there. There's more pressure on uh, Stouffer and you're going to sack him again for losses. Boy, that's Steve Spiewak. And I can't say enough for, for the pride that this front four has. Tom Miller has just done a great job with them. There again is is um, is Chad and uh, Spiewak and, uh, and John Steed and uh, Hankerman. I mean, they've done that week after week after week now. All right, Coach, you're up 14 nothing, but I'm sure at... Uh, at the uh, halftime, you're in there talking to your ball club. Uh, they had come out last week, and you really had a rough second half. What'd you say? Well, I told them, i tell you one thing. We, we'd forgotten last week. <laughs> and I told them, you know, that we had to come out and establish some dominance like we did down at, uh, down at, New, uh, at UTEP that night when we took the se second half kickoff and drove 80 yards with it. And that's what we had to do coming out of, the, out of the dressing room. All right, let's go right back out. And here's the kickoff, Coach, and it goes through the end zone. Uh, you've got the win. Uh, they've got the win. Well, we're against the wind right now. Of course, you know, John, we elected to, uh, to, we won the toss, elected to defer our option, and of course they elected to win, and again tells you a little bit about, you know, the confidence they had in their offense and, uh, they, I mean, defense, and they thought they could stop us down there. That was a fine play. Jimmy's handling the option very well, and here's our only miscue during the day, and to be honest with you, Anthony just slipped on the play. It's a fine thrown ball by Jimmy right there. And uh, Hardy Griffin just made a great play. I mean, so boy, what a big play this was. And if we'd have just picked <laughs> up that ball, somebody turned around and blocked because we had three blue jerseys right there, but Terry Mackey blocks that kick. And, John, we dominated the kicking game. Wasn't any question about that. Well, uh, here you are, a little uh, 
fumble there, but Steve Hendrickson well, falls Well, Steve falls on the ball, and of course, uh, we got to protect the ball a little bit better than that. But again, Jimmy did a good job not forcing anything downfield. Great pressure again by Johnny Steve right here on, on Stouffer and uh, Chad Hennings. And again, uh, that's one of the six we have. But what a great <laughs> punt right here. Tahita, this one will go 88 yards. Of course, it takes a, a nice bounce, and you did have the wind at his back. But uh, then you take over again, and uh, they're still playing tough because they believe they're in this football oh, game. Boy, they are very much in this football game, and they got us in our own backyard down there. We're trying to throw the ball, and we're throwing the ball with the wind. And I was a little disappointed in this right here because it was only two seconds, uh, two minutes remaining in the third quarter. And, of course, they had the wind behind them, and they had to go for the big play. But the thing about it is our defense really got tough down there, and it took them a series of plays to get in that end zone. Steve Bartello from Colorado Springs, of course, and you really bottled him up and played tremendous. He had really hurt you a year ago. Oh, he really had. And, of course, you know, he only needed 101 yards, and I think our defense made a little commitment to themselves and just said, hey, uh, you know, uh, he's not going to get that whack record against us. And, boy, what a great job they did. Late hit.